What do you sell in your businesses? I ask this question at seminar after seminar and I get lots of funny kind of responses. Well, we sell uh, skin treatments and we sell customer service and we sell ourselves and we sell cut and colour and we sell uh, waxing. But you've got to ask yourself, what do you really sell? Two years ago I woke up one morning and discovered that I had not yet had my midlife crisis. That very morning I drove down to the local Harley Davidson dealership and I bought a big shiny loud midlife crisis. But see what I was buying was not a motorcycle. I was buying a big shiny thing that made loud noises and made me feel good. Yeah, emotion. See, Harley Davidson, they make motorcycles, but they don't sell them. What they actually sell is sex appeal. So I went and bought some. <laughs> I sold it a couple of years later when I found out that even that wouldn't help me. Okay? So what you're selling in your salon has nothing to do with the services you provide. And when you start thinking like that, your entire approach to your marketing changes. See, what you're really selling is what Charles Revson told his staff they were selling. Revson founded a, a small, insignificant cosmetics company called Revlon. Uh, and he used to tell his staff, in the factory we make lipstick, but in the store we sell hope. That's what you sell. That customer wants to walk out that door feeling that she's sexier, better looking, she can get a better partner, have a better sex life, just by going to your business. That's what your customers want, don't they? So why on earth are you selling microdermabrasion and facial peels and unpronounceable sexual things? <laughs> why do you sell cut and colour? Because nobody actually wants what you're selling. Nobody has ever, no woman in the history of humankind has ever woken up, nudged Norm in the ribs, said, Norm, what I want today is to go down to Mary's salon, I want Mary to pour hot wax on my thigh and tear the hair out by the roots. <laughs> the service you provide is actually just a tool to get the customers what they want. I'm going to prove it to you, I'll show you this. See, what your customers want is what they see on the newsstands every single day. And the, the shelves of the news agencies are where you should be looking for your marketing ideas. They want to look like these girls. Why do they want to look like these girls? Because these girls have been marketed to look sexy and appealing and pretty damn foxy. The secret in marketing is to, to, to discover what your clients agonise about lying in bed staring at the ceiling at 3am. And when you have the answer to that, you're halfway there. I'll give you some examples. Being different is better than being good. I keep hearing from salon owners when I ask them, why should I come to see you? Because we're good. You're all bloody good. That's why customers come to see you, isn't it? They assume you're good because you've put up, up a shingle and you've told them, I'm a qualified beauty therapist or a hairdresser. I'm a baby boomer. Who, who else is a baby boomer in here? Lots of baby boomers. Baby boomers don't want price, they want service and they want to feel good. And it's about the experience. It's not about what you pay. It's about the value you get. And I'm going to talk to you about value in a moment. See, most of you discount. I'm going to, I'm going to say this once and I want you to repeat it. Discounting is evil takes money out of your pocket, doesn't get any eviler than that. Discounting conditions your clients to expect it. Whoever has had the client come in and say, oh, have you got that special discount on this week? Oh, no, sorry, that was last week. Oh, I'll come back when you've got it again. Next thing you've got to do is work out what is your offer. And I hinted at that when I said discounting is evil. A 10% discount is not an offer. Okay? So when you make an offer tomorrow, 
your offer has to have more in it than a 10% discount. Why? 10% is a funny figure. So is 20%. You know why it's bad to offer a percentage discount? Because people have to think. If they have to work it out, you've lost them. So if you are going to discount, give them a number. Everyone knows what a $20 note looks like. If they have to think, gosh, 10% of $67, oh, that's too hard. They're gone. So an offer has to have in it value-added stuff. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you very, very simply. So you've gone to a BMW dealer mm -hmm. and you've decided, okay, well, he's given you a price. Let's say I'm the dealer, okay? Well, Kelly, um, we can do that for you for $95,000. Is that okay? Yes. So you're thinking, okay, that's okay. But you want to shop around, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. So you go down to dealer B. And, and you ask dealer B, identical car, identical car. But dealer B, which is me, I'm charging you $96,000. Which one are you going to pick? I'm going to pick the person that actually does the most for me. Like, you, right. that is going to sell me that car. But all things actually... being equal, if the only yeah. difference is the price, which one are you going to buy? The You're going to buy the $95,000 yeah. one, the yeah. cheaper one, yeah. aren't you? Okay. Yeah. But what if I said, you're going to actually spend $96,000? And here's why. Because at the other dealer, you get a $95,000 car. But what I'm going to do is some, add some value to you. Okay? So I'm going to say, well, look, I tell you what. For $96,000, I'm going to give you $105,000 worth of motor car. Is that okay? Yes, that sounds So good. I'm going to give you five years roadside assist, which is uh, $900 worth, and I'm going to put sheepskin covers on the seats so that you don't mess them up. And that's another $900 worth. Um, what if I made sure that the windows were tinted and also that you got free um, uh, servicing for the next 12 months? Would that be okay? I'd say great, wrap it up. Great. <laughs> How much has all of that cost me as the dealer? Next to nothing. How much have I won that client? Yeah, 100%. You see, if all you can do is offer a cheaper price and give them nothing else to compare, all you're doing is comparing apples with apples. We want you to make it impossible for your customers to compare you with another competitor so that we turn your offer into an orange and theirs is an apple. And what I've just done with Kelly's new BMW is exactly that. Same deal but looks better, okay? What else does your offer need to have in it? It needs to have scarcity in it, okay? I'm gonna show you some ads with some of these things in it. But scarcity is a very, very valuable thing. It makes people want it more. And there's no point in creating the world's best offer if you then say, I'm gonna give it to you anytime you like. When do you want the phone to ring? Now. The other thing you need to have in your offer is a call to action. Call to action is a very, very simple thing. It says call now. Why do you say call now? Because that's when you want them to call, not next week. And the funny thing is that when you tell people what to do, they like it. How do I prove? What are you going to do to prove that what you're telling works?